I think mobile credentials are already pretty common across uh, across Western Europe. Um, and I think that's probably due to um, an increased uh, penetration of, uh, of the higher end um, smartphones, uh, plus a focus on, on security innovation. Uh, and I think that's that we expect really to see uh, to see that to be the case globally, not just in uh, in Western Europe. Um, and the drivers from from uh, the research and from the feedback that we've we've had, it really comes down to to convenience. And that's not just convenience for the end user, but convenience for the um, for the admin or the facility manager as well. Um, so mobile credentials for for the end user, they offer a, a frictionless or, or a low touch, low friction uh, access. Uh, and the benefits for the for the admins for the site managers is that issue the, the credentials can be generated um, issued or revoked um, quickly and and remotely um, and I think when you add to to the convenience is the the security factor so um, a mobile uh, mobile based access control system offers a, a strong uh, encryption and that's not just of the the credential itself but also the, the communication channel through which the credential is uh, is transferred. So that, that prevent, prevents the compromise of the credential, which is a huge problem for like card-based proc systems, for example. And even we've seen in, in certain smart cards where there's uh, a, a compromise of the key. Um, I think on, on top of that, the, the phone security features themselves can be leveraged. So, for example, the, the, the um, screen lock of your phone. So that really means that if the phone is lost or, or stolen, somebody uh, finds that and, and is able to twin that with whichever building you work at or live in, then they're not able to gain uh, unauthorized access to that building still by virtue of the, the phone lock itself. So there's that additional layer of security. Um, and I think another comment is is our behavior as well. You know, when you think about how we how we look after our our possessions, um, you know, how many times might you have left a uh, an access card on your desk and gone home for the weekend? You know, you, you're out the doors, up the road. You probably wouldn't turn back if you realized it was still on your desk. Or you wouldn't head back to the office. But if, if if it was your mobile phone, you almost certainly would do. You know, we tend to have our phones on us all the time. We're uh, intimately aware of where they are. And we really don't like to leave them unattended somewhere. So that in itself also gives a, a, a significant layer of security. But I think in the, in the mid to short term, it's really about com, uh, complementing the established uh, ID forms, the established uh, uh, technologies. So providing the, the convenience of mobile credentials uh, alongside those established um, technologies, the card based technologies, which really gives like flexibility in this in this period where we're seeing migration towards the uh, the mobile credentials. As a technology, mobile-based access um, systems actually offer a great many advantages. If, if they're implemented properly, it really shouldn't carry any additional risks or pose significant challenges. So I'll give you one example. When we look at, um, at Bluetooth uh, communication, so that there have been Different uh, attacks uh, demonstrated by uh, certain groups on, on general Bluetooth communication and, and the Bluetooth protocol. But our own uh, mobile access solution um, doesn't use standard Bluetooth protocols for the whole communication exchange. All it does is it establishes a connection between the mobile and, and the reader um, via standard Bluetooth protocols. And then after that point, we create an encrypted tunnel um, through which all of the communication subsequently takes place. And that's using our own proprietary technology. I think similarly, if, if there's a high security environment, then those security managers with this type of technology can always enforce uh, additional security through, for example, making sure users have to use the tap in app mode uh, and maybe also enforce a screen lock on a, uh, on a corporate smartphone. So it can't be, uh, can't be abused if it's found, if it's lost. On top of that, so the digital credentials like these, as I mentioned earlier, they, they can be remotely remote from, uh, uh, revoked from a, a mobile device. So it, 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 it's really about the advantages. But to answer your question, perhaps if, if, if there is a challenge or looking at uh, one of the bigger challenges facing mobile credentials, um, probably come with like true, totally contactless uh, modes, or some people call it proximity mode, where you just approach the reader, you don't need to take any action, and just you approaching the reader is enough to authenticate and open the door, which all sounds very well. It's, you know, it's, it, it's uh, um, got a great appeal to it, but actually practically it causes some problems. If you imagine 
um, a busy office or a busy apartment block where you, you just sat somewhere near your front door or a desk somewhere near the office door uh, and your presence alone is enough to con continuously trigger the uh, the opening of the door or wandering past down a hallway and you, you know you trigger a bunch of doors as you go past so that's that's probably a really big um, uh, big challenge to end of actually made a purposeful decision to avoid these proximity modes up until now because we we weren't happy with the balance of, of convenience versus the security um, having said that we've actually been working on a project at the moment to uh, to make a huge leap forward uh, with our mobile access technology um, to really increase the security speed reliability um, and one of the consequences of, of that is that actually we can uh, much more robustly prevent unwanted door accesses where a mobile phone is used to open a door uh, when it's not actually required by the user, the owner of the mobile phone. So we'll be looking at that again. I'd have to say, uh, you know, our phones have evolved to to become uh, like key tools in assisting with our everyday life. Uh, so we rely on them in, in pretty much every every walk of life, um, from control of, of, of our smart homes through to, you know, internet banking, making payments, uh, shopping online. It, it's something we're all very familiar with. Um, and reflecting that, I think the number of uh, mobile uh, mobile credential unit shipments is actually set to grow by almost tenfold um, over the next uh, the next four three years up until 2024. Um, Driving that, we've, we've got some clear advantages of mobile based uh, access control systems. So some of the ones we've already discussed and others, um, for example, um, a, a single mobile device using a mobile based access uh, access control can hold pretty much unlimited number of credentials to you know, multiple different sites. So you don't need a, a physical card for each uh, each credential or site. And when you look at the trend, I mean, you know, we're all familiar with these plastic um, store loyalty cards, you know, for Calcland or for Aldi or whoever. Uh, and if you're anything like me, you know, you, there was a stage where your wallet's getting kind of full to bursting with all these plastic cards. Uh, so people are already moving for this, for this type of credential, people or physical kind of uh, access. They're moving towards a virtual, towards an app based um, platform. And we're seeing exactly the same thing in access credentials as well especially where where people need to use the same credential to or need to use credentials to access a range of different locations like their their home apartment block their different work locations maybe the gym uh, so people are really kind of expecting to see that this move to a digital credential uh, and we're also seeing a huge increase in uh, in mobile usage with home deliveries like for things like groceries and uh, any other item um, where here the, the the use of an innovative technology it it gives people that peace of mind to receive home deliveries securely and conveniently when they're not at home so you can imagine for example a video enabled app on a mobile which which lets the user uh, allow access to a secure facility in the building uh, letting deliveries get made securely to that that predefined location uh, maybe that would be a delivery room in a block of flats or a, a secure area in the resident's apartment, for example, in their apartment block. And importantly, this this technology is is easy and quick to install. So it, it removes uh, it, it's something very feasible, very simply done, and therefore it can easily allow the risk uh, or minimize the risk of strangers coming into the home. Well, that's that's a good question, and I, I think there are several risks with uh, with biometric technology. Um, first one to mention probably is the the the, the perception uh, that biometric credentials represent like a, a, an invasion of privacy. Um, obviously, they're they're, they're tied uh, typically with facial recognition fingerprints. They're tied to an immutable, personal, physical characteristic, and I think people feel uncomfortable in knowing that this data, the data representing something about them personally that can't be changed, is out there and beyond their control. Um, and obviously that carries with it another problem that once that once that data is compromised, it, it's difficult to undo. You know, you can't change your face, you can't change your fingerprint. Um, so that 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 in itself poses a problem, uh, a problem in limiting the, 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 the damage of any kind of data breach. Um, I think biometric credentials also tend to make people feel a bit exposed, especially in the case of facial recognition. You know, we see cameras everywhere. Everywhere you go out in public, it's difficult to be somewhere and not, not have a camera watching you. 
So with, with facial recognition, you know, your credential is out there and it's under constant observation. You can't turn it off. You can't disable your face. It's, it's very difficult to, to kind of conceal your face uh, from every camera you pass. Uh, unlike, uh, you know, a mobile credential, you can turn off your phone or turn off your Bluetooth or revoke your permissions. So it's, it's, it's less exposed. Um, and I, I think to top it off, there's also the, the, this, the risk of legislative uncertainty. So we're all familiar with, uh, you know, the introduction of GDPR and, and facility managers, data managers know what a big headache that causes in, in handling um, personal data. Uh, but plus, there's also local laws and legislation um, surrounding the use of biometric information technology data. And that's quite a rapidly changing landscape. It's really dynamic. Uh, and subject to sudden change you know, uh, at, uh, at short notice. So that uncertainty in legislation translates to an uncertainty in investment when firms have to invest in hardware and technology. So they invest, make a decision to invest in, in uh, biometrics and they're not sure if in half a year's time they're going to need to make big changes again because there's a, uh, legal changes which restrict the usage. Um, I, I don't think so necessarily. Um, so, for example, with with 2N and our our product portfolio, IP Verso um, Intercom it is a modular intercom, and it supports a whole massive range of um, completely interchangeable reader modules. So, um, in this type of case, a transference from from uh, legacy to mobile uh, access technology, the RFID module can just be switched over for a Bluetooth capable um, reader module. Um, in a matter of minutes, uh, and there's no need to change the the, the main unit, but change the, the the intercom itself. It's just a case: remove a frame, swap a module over, and uh, and the job is done. And additionally, we also provide in our uh, in our hardware portfolio um, modules which which support mixed technology. So let's say Bluetooth plus RFID in the same module. So that really helps with allowing that migration that I mentioned earlier over a period of time. You know, it, it's unlikely that you'll get everybody who's currently using a card to switch to mobile credentials at the same time, especially in a shared building with different companies. So if we can provide that, that uh, mixed technology reader, then it allows it to be phased in. People can still use their card credentials alongside uh, mobile credentials and, and phase that uh, migration in. Um, as for the, the platform itself, um, I think support of mobile credentials is increasingly becoming a, you know, an expected core feature. And our own uh, Access Commander software platform it actually supports the enrollment and management of uh, Bluetooth credentials, and it has done for, for some time. So I think the, the, the key really is choosing an, um, an access control system which offers um, flexibility um, to allow that transitioning to a new technology like mo mobile credentials or, or some other technology as it emerges. So really thinking about the future needs and, and looking for a, a, an access control system that supports that flexibility. Well, I'd, I'd have to say Germany is perhaps a little bit slower when it comes to the usage of uh, new digital services or paid services like cloud um, services compared perhaps to some other European countries. Um, the question with mobile credentials is always uh, who, who's the owner of the of the device of the mobile phone. Um, so if if the owner is a, a corporation, a company who's giving out uh, the phones to their employees, then mobile credentials really don't pose any problem at all. Uh, similarly in Germany. Um, but if it's the other way around, if the employee is forced to to use his own personal device, then sometimes that can cause a problem because obviously the employee if they're being told, hey, you've got to start using mobile credentials on your own phone, that, that they've got no chance to say no. But, but I think here it's often about privacy concerns. So if we can educate the user uh, and tell that, that, that user, hey, you're using your own phone, but you know, th this is why we're asking for these permissions. It's just to make your, your, uh, your app work without needing input from you. It works in the background or, or this is what we're using your, your data for. It's not to share with third party companies or track you. It, it, it's just to know that you're near a reader so we can uh, wake the app up only when you're near a reader and save your battery. And I think even with their own mobile phones, people will start being more uh, open to using them for mobile access. Well, I, I think really it's an uh, emphatic no, because mobile credentials, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, aren't, aren't tied with any like immutable, unchangeable physical characteristic of the uh, of the holder. 
So if, if a phone is lost or stolen, then those credentials that, that are stored on the device can easily be replaced with new ones and, and the credential itself doesn't mean anything. You know, it doesn't have anything that can be in any way used to identify you personally from a, a, your physical characteristics. Um, whereas obviously facial recognition, for example, is intrinsically personally identifiable. Um, so yeah, mobile credentials don't have that, that, that weakness or that concern, let's say. Um, and that means that uh, mobile keys um, can be can be kept on on record on the on the overall administration platform, stored in an, uh, an anonymized way much more uh, much more easily. And that also has repercussions for data managers. You know, they don't need to worry about how they're storing mobile credentials in in terms of their compliance with GDPR. So, like, how long are these being stored for, and in what logs are they accessible? Um, it, it, it's a much easier decision process for the, for those data managers. Uh, plus, the user's in control um, with mobile credentials, so they can uh, easily turn off their phone if they if they don't want to be um, tracked or, or using that credential, or they can turn off the Bluetooth, or they can change the access permissions um, if they're happier with a you know a lower level of performance. Mobile-based access technology is already um, popular in domestic environments like large homes, single villas, or uh, multifamily uh, uh, multifamily buildings. Um, and we're currently working actually on a new solution uh, which will offer a, a flexible and intuitive platform for facility managers to manage their residents' uh, access credentials and access rights, um, whilst at the same time delivering a, a resident-facing app um, to the tenants or residents. And that will in, enrich their living experience at the property or provide added value, give them access, uh, quick access to, to features which they, they expect or which they uh, which which will make their lives easier. So things like handling video door calls remotely, um, enabling mobile based access or, or, or even granting uh, access to visitors all contained within the same app. Um, and we certainly plan to develop that that uh, that platform even further. So to provide even more convenience to those residents by answering a, a, perhaps a, an even broader range of their uh, of their domestic needs within one single interface.